In this video, I'm gonna show you that sick animation. It's extremely easy to make it very powerful. And on top of that, I prepared the assets for you in the description so you can follow along. With that being said, we're gonna get straight into Adobe After Effects. So we're back in the software, I prepared two assets, I'm just gonna drop them on the timeline and let me show you the comp settings. So today we got a horizontal aspect ratio, I'm just gonna change the duration to say 10 seconds. All right, let's hit okay. And now if I reorder the assets, you're gonna notice the man. And if I turn off the couch, actually this is the background, then you're gonna notice only the man with the couch. So this is gonna be perfect for creating a little bit of depth. All right, so now what we're gonna do is turn on the visibility for the background. I'm gonna scale it up a bit. Then also I'm gonna scale up the man just like that. And next thing we're gonna create a new camera. This time we're gonna go for a preset of 15 millimeters. I used it yesterday and for some reason it looked pretty cool. Anyway, pick the type of the camera, OneNote camera, and now we're gonna hit OK. I'm gonna drop it underneath, then right click, go to new, no object, rename to cam control, and we're gonna turn on the 3D on everything. Now make sure to parent the camera to the null and also change the color. And now we're ready to open up the second view. And here what we want to do is just create a little bit of distance between the man with the couch and the background. So actually I'm gonna grab the background, and move it away a little bit, not too much. Then I'm gonna scale it up and we can go back to one view. Now what we can do is right click, go to new, solid, and we're actually gonna create a cover. I'm gonna hit okay. We need to turn it into 3D as well. Then I'm gonna go to the second view. And what I want to do is have that background closer to the camera than the man. So we're just gonna do it like that and then move it towards the right. So this is gonna just serve us as some sort of a wall and just because of that we're gonna get even more depth. So I'm gonna go back again to one view and we're ready to create a keyframe for position. So I'm gonna hit P, hit the stopwatch and then we're gonna probably move forward with the time indicator and then move to the left just like that. Okay, let's just see how it looks. This is pretty cool. I would just like to easy ease the keyframes, go to the graph editor and we're just gonna create a subtle peak on the left. Something like that should do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Then what we need to do is duplicate cam control one, hit U, delete the last keyframe, parent one to two, and we're actually gonna create even sharper movement towards the left. Now I'm gonna select both easy ease again, go to the graph editor, and I'm just gonna create a peak in the middle. It's kind of important to create a sharp peak because right at this position, we're gonna switch the camera. Okay, the movement is way too slow, so we're just gonna squeeze in the keyframes and adjust. Okay, that's pretty good. And also we got some empty area over here. If I toggle transparency grid, you're gonna notice this. So for this, what we need to do is actually go to the camera, hit P, and we're just gonna get closer and maybe a little bit towards the right. Okay, let's see now. Okay, that's pretty cool. Seems to be perfect. We could probably go as far as this. It doesn't really matter that we got an empty area over here because we're gonna switch the camera. Actually, we're gonna do it right now. So what I'm gonna do is find that peak, which is somewhere here, and then we're just gonna hit Control shift d for the camera. And this was important to actually pick one note camera because right now, with position, we can easily zoom in and just go closer to the man. Something like that should do. And let's just see what we got. Okay, that's pretty cool. I would probably go more towards the left. And here we want to have the text. So for this, I'm gonna hit Control t and I'm gonna type in, I can't, or maybe let's change it for, you can't skip the video. Actually, this is the exact same font I used yesterday. So basically this is Montserrat Light. I'm just gonna probably change the font size. And what we're gonna do is turn on the 3D, recenter it, Control Alt Home, I believe. And then we're just gonna get it closer to the camera, scale it down. And basically the whole idea with this is to have that text in front of the man. So if we zoom in, actually toggle transparency grid, you're gonna notice that the text is in front of the man. Then we got a man with the couch and then we got a background. So literally this configuration is perfect. I'm gonna go back to one view. And what we want to do is stream that text when the camera switches. Okay, that's pretty cool. And there's a lot of movement for the text. So one thing we could do is just go to position and get it closer to the man. And that way we're gonna prevent that sharp movement. So it's less intense, but we need to scale it up and probably push it even more towards the man. Let's see now, pretty good. A little adjustment, something like that should do. And the next thing we need to do is head over to the camera, camera options, and we're gonna turn on the depth of field. And if I open up the second view, actually I'm gonna make some space over here. So now we got an extra rectangle in the camera. So if we play around with the focus distance, we need to match that rectangle with the man on the couch. All right, let's adjust it a bit. Seems to be perfect. So look what happens when I bump up the aperture. Look at the cover. So this is gonna get out of focus together with the background. So if I bumped it up by a lot, you're gonna notice that the background is blurry and the man is in focus. Let's actually check it out. 
honestly a pretty cool look but i think i would go for something like 350. all right so this is perfect we can actually do it in the second camera so i'm gonna turn on the depth of field and then we're gonna just adjust the focus distance we need to look at it from the side okay perfect and we're gonna also change it to 350 and actually here the thing we should put in focus is the text so if i zoom it in we're gonna notice that here we got the text so right now it should be perfect now we don't want to go as far as 350 we're gonna change it to like say 25 maybe a bit more like 75 yeah that's pretty cool so right now since everything in the background is out of focus it can allow the viewer to focus on the text all right so this is already looking fire now what we can do is right click go to new I'm gonna pick an adjustment layer and here we're gonna add transform effect. Now I'm gonna alt click position, type in wiggle and in brackets 1.2, say 12. Okay, that's a bit too intense. I would probably go for something like 8. Okay, pretty much perfect. It literally looks like somebody's spying on him. We're just kind of having that view from behind the wall. That's looking really dope. So if you take a closer look over here, and we play it back you're gonna notice that the background is moving a little bit different to the character which is giving us the depth now we're gonna add motion blur and we're gonna loop it somewhere here maybe even faster hopefully it was easier than you expected and remember you got the assets in the description below so with that being said i'm gonna wrap it up here and i'll see you tomorrow cheers guys